<laughs> are we are we live? <laughs> we 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 are live exclusively on Instagram right now um, cuz we are so excited about the top 10 sci-fi movies ever list. Now, listen Instagram, we are not going to show the whole list here. We are just not going to fucking do it. All right? If you want to see the whole list, Go to YouTube.com, search Corker Comics, watch the whole video there, subscribe to our channel, and uh, if you don't, fuck off. I don't know, whatever, right? Anyways, holy shit, top 10 sci-fi movies ever. Now, here's the deal, guys. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. This is top 10 sci- I'm thinking about what the segment we just did, like- Oh, yeah, we just did our Kingsman review, which will be on YouTube, uh, but anyways, yeah. Um, anyways- or, or are you talking about the raspberries? All of it, man. Just, All this of it? is okay. ridiculous. Anyways, okay, listen. Listen. Top 10 sci-fi movies ever. Here's the rules. It's not top 10 sci-fi movies according to popular opinion, critics, or anything like that. Or it its is, impact on, on the genre. Or, or its impact on the genre. It is top 10 sci-fi movies in the opinion of Wonski and myself here. Sure. And uh, it's going to be in order. 10 being... The least one being like the almighty, like what the fuck, and this is current to date, um, and obviously more movies will come out in the future. So this list may change, or we may change our minds later. But right now, this is what it fucking is. To be fair, he told me to do this with five minutes to do it. No, 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 stop, 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 stop. He's like, "Want to make a list? You got five minutes." I gave him a day's notice. (laughs) <laughs> it's like, we're gonna play this game. Let's do this. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's do this. I'm kidding. I didn't give a day's notice, but I gave him more than five minutes. Like ten. What? That's, that's, that's not true. That's not true. That's. Anyways, listen. So here we go. Another episode of Atomic Pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy. I'm Stephen Corka. I am Juan. And we are going to give our top ten sci-fi movies ever. Now, to be fair, there are so many great sci-fi movies. There are so. <laughs> don't peek at my list. All right. <laughs> There, there are so many great sci-fi movies that um, we had to give some honorable mentions. Ten wasn't enough. So why don't we just do a top 13 list? No. These are our three honorable mentions. They weren't good enough to hit the top ten. Meaning they're 11, 12, and 13. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't. So welcome to our top 13 <laughs> sci-fi movies. They were not good enough to hit our top ten. So... We're not even going to talk a lot about them. That's because we don't care about them because they didn't even hit our top ten. Just brief one. What is your number one honorable mention? Brazil from Terry Gilliam. I've never even seen that movie. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Is Let's, it good? Huh? It's. I mean, it's a. It's his. It's his future where every there's um all why, this why, bureaucracy. Why, why, does it, and, why does it even hit any list of yours? It's just it's fantastic. Terry Gilliam's Brazil is great. So okay, my number one is uh, Interstellar. Uh, di- oh, I haven't seen that yet either. Uh, directed by Chris Nolan, uh, starring Matthew, Matthew McConaughey. Matthew yeah. McConaughey. I've heard it's good, and Christopher Nolan's awesome. You know what? I've heard uh, people say they either love it or they hate it. I haven't heard any in the middle. Let me tell you what. It's a long fucking movie, yeah. which seems to be the trend in Hollywood lately, um, and it's super science heavy. Like, if you don't like science, you will not like this movie, but it's great, and the soundtrack is great, too. Uh, Hans Zimmer did a great right. job on the soundtrack. Next. So check out Interstellar. Um, your second honorable mention? Uh, Highlander. I've never seen that either. Shut the fuck I up! I swear to God, you have never seen I've Highlander. Never seen Highlander, I've never seen. Dude, when did that movie even come out? Like in the eighties. No, I remember Highlander: The Quickening. No, that was like part. F- no, yeah. No Highlander I, I, with I, Sean Connery. Yeah, I, and- I, I understand, but I, I've never seen it. Wow. And with Raiden, I know. I, I don't. I don't. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not gonna say anything to you. Is now. it good? What is it? Well, it made my list. But can yeah, all these movies are good. All right, all right. My number two is wow. Ghostbusters. Fine. The original one, directed by Ivan Reitman, starring you know Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, uh, Ernie Hudson. That's and fine. Bill That's Murray. a great movie. It's a great movie, and you want to know what? It is sci-fi, but it's comedy sci-fi. You want to know what's weird? As as time has has gone on, I've I've started to prefer Ghostbusters too. Shut up. Yeah. Over Ghostbusters. Yep. You've lost your mind. No, it's just, I don't know. Maybe Ghostbusters ones, I've just seen it too many times. I've seen that movie like 50 times. Whatever. So. Ghostbusters is a great sci-fi. It's a great comedy, but it it, is. but it's a 
It's a great sci-fi movie too. It's 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 hunting ghosts. Yeah. You know? uh, what's your number three honorable mention? Equilibrium. I've never seen no, that of either. You haven't seen- <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen. I'm so glad you love sci-fi. I've never seen that either. So it's with Christian Bale, so you know it's going to be fantastic. I don't know the director. I didn't look up our honorable mentions because we we're going to talk about. I them. told you to put the directors down. But you said we we're going to talk about these are throwaways, and now we're giving oh, like synapses. Oh, oh, for the honorable. Okay, so this fine. is like Christian Bale, and it's in the future, right? There's been World War Three. And so the government has decided to prevent anything like that ever happening. Oh, I, I've heard about this. Movie. People yeah, have yeah, to yeah. take like emotion suppression okay, pills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and it's about Christian Bale's character, like he stops taking the pills and okay. starts having emotions. Fucking stupid. Okay. But the movie's great. All right. Well, I wish I had that pill now. My, all right. All right. The audience is gonna kill me here. You might kill me too. All right. Um, my third honorable mention was not good enough to hit my top ten. <laughs> Alien, director by Ridley Scott. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Not I, only is it entertaining and good, it's I, one. It, I, I knew that was gonna so piss you off right now. That it, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why later. I'll tell you why later. It's 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 irrelevant now. Fine. But 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 it's it's it, it, it was good enough to make my honorable mention. It's but, on my fucking list, so we're gonna talk but, about it. But it, it, it I didn't I didn't like it enough to put it in the top ten. So those are honorable mentions. It was quick. To the point. Now we'll get into the guts and and we'll get detailed top with our top ten. We'll get a, we'll movies. get a little more top ten sci-fi movies ever in the opinion of us, which actually means nothing. But still, we like to talk about it. And by the way, if you guys want to put your top ten, please be sure to put in your comments and all that stuff like that. Or you could say Juan's stupid or I'm an idiot for thinking. Yeah, tell us who think. wins. Yeah, sure. Anyways, all right, so. I'll start. Sure. Since you started the album mentions, I will start this. Okay. Top 10 sci-fi movies. My number 10, The Time Machine, released in 1960, uh, directed by George Paul, starring Shut the Rod fuck Taylor. Up. Okay, so you'd rather go home and watch The Time Machine than watch Alien? Yes. Lie. Next. Yes. No, that's a lie. Listen, The Time Why? Listen, this is my opinion. Suck my dick. All right? Anyways, listen. All right? So, uh, <laughs> 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 oh, that was so good. I didn't even see it. Yeah, of course. And I was, oh, but it's I, not fair because I, I put. Shh, 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 shh. Starship Troopers is amazing, but oh I, I didn't. But anyways, you can't change one. No, I'm not changing. We I'm can't not, change the I'm list. Not, I'm not changing we can't the list. Change the list. It's just I try to only pick one movie from each director. All right. And no, and he had a way. Each director, you could pick. Well, you could if you want to pick every movie, but that was directed by Ridley Scott. You could do that. Look, Starship Troopers is fantastic, right, but when you hear the rest of the list, there's right, no listen, way you can make I, it. Can on I this. talk about the time machine? Oh God, yeah, go talk about the 1960s right, time machine. First of all, written by Jules Verne, who is arguably father of science fiction. Can we say that? Is that huh? a fair statement? Are we talking about movies or books? Jules Verne, essentially, father of science fiction. We're not, we're, but we're not t- supposed to talk about the impact of these movies culturally. Just so, why you like it? I, I I understand that. You're breaking the rules. No, I'm not breaking the rules because this is why I like it, asshole. Okay. Right. So you like it because Jules Verne is a father of science fiction. Sure. No, that's not why I like he it. He is. That's he how, is. That's how I'm starting the conversation oh, okay. of the time machine. He wrote the time machine. The time machine. This is happening because you put Alien as an honorable mention. You know that, right? I'm so <laughs> upset at you. Listen. Like, but we're friends. This listen, could have repercussions listen, outside have of this fucking show. I have a good show. reason. Go. I have a good reason. Go with your time machine thing. I, I have a good reason that Alien didn't make the top ten. All right? God. Go fist, Batsy. <laughs> time, go, time, time, don't worry. Do your time right. machine thing. Time machine because listen, I have Alien on here. Right, listen, listen. Because the time machine. First of all, I love movies with time travel. I love time travel. It's good. Answer your fucking phone, Rich. That's, that's my phone. That's oh, mine. that's your uh, phone. Yeah, I left it down over there though. <laughs> Damn. Well, at least you didn't have it with you. Time machine isn't even the best time travel movie ever made. I didn't say it was. How many time travel movies? Your whole list is time travel. <laughs> no, no, it's That's not. why you left on Alien. <laughs> no. Because you got Looper on there, 12 no. Monkeys. Stop. Oh, yeah. This Stop. Is, okay. Stop. Stop. Time Machine is great because, first of all, it, it, it's, a, it's a classic story that's interpreted great and really 
gives a bleak future into a post-apocalyptic world where the human civilization has turned into cannibalistic mutants that live underground. Mm -hmm. It is so sci-fi. And for that to come out in 1960 and, and tell that story, and for Jules Verne to write that shit even way before then, like, like great movie, great interpretation of time travel. It, it, it. There are many different interpretations of time travel in science fiction, uh, literature, as well as movies, TV shows, whatever it is. In this version... When you time travel, you don't move. Wherever you leave, that's where you end up in whatever time you go to. Mm -hmm. There are other movies where, like, like Time Cop, for example, which is a great movie, which didn't make my list, but um, where, where you, you time travel from one area and then you end up in a completely different area, you know? You know what what happened with, with Time Cop? What? That Jean-Claude Van Damme did those amazing splits way too early in the movie, so, like, nothing in that movie was going to compare. Time Cop was great, man. You remember the splits on the kitchen? I remember the, the splits on the See, kitchen. Everyone camera. remember that. Since it, I don't yeah. remember the rest of the movie, but I, I remember them splits. I remember Ron Silver. That he was a bad villain. Ron Silver was. Yeah, yeah. 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 Underrated that guy. I agree. Time Machine is good. I mean, Time Jules Machine. Verne is is classic. Yeah, like, and, it's it's my number ten. You know, sure. it, 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 and you want it's better. It's it's better than Interstellar, Ghostbusters, and Alien, in my opinion. Sure. You know, uh, is it is it more entertaining to watch? You know, for our generation and even younger generations. Probably not. It's a little slower. It's an older movie. It's shot with lower quality. That, that's a pro I put my, my list is movies that I want to watch over and over. And every movie on my list, I've seen at least five, six I, times. And I've seen The Time Machine like four or five times. That's insane. I that's know. Good for you, man. And I, I've seen it more than I've seen Alien, actually. It's really weird. Yeah, I've only seen Alien like twice, I think. Yeah. I yeah. know, it's weird. Um, okay. I know. Anyways, what's your number 10? <laughs> After all that talking shit, my number 10 is Alien. Really? <laughs> so it, it's not even it's not even nine eight seven six five four three two one. It's like it, it barely made the list. It ba alien barely made the list. Like, 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 the, like, like they said Starship Troopers, and you're like, oh shit, should I bump Alien for Starship Troopers? <laughs> fuck. So, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> wow. Damn. So, <laughs> Alien being an almost honorable mention <laughs> was directed by Ridley Scott. Directed by Ridley Scott? Look, man, we talked a lot about Alien in our review. Alien's one of my favorite franchises. Alien is great. For Listen, Alien made, it, it was like in my, in, my, in, in top 13. Right. It's in your top 10. There are hundreds of sci-fi movies. And for it to be up yeah. there says a lot. Alien. Now, Alien was really important to the genre, but <clears throat> super important to the genre. Super important for female leads. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The whole. Yeah. Right. And 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 you want to know what? I mean, this is your movie. Let me shut the fuck up. Go. Like the 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 thing is that Alien also is just hugely entertaining. It's just fun to watch, and um, a lot of horror movies aren't just fun to watch. I don't think it's fun. I think it's I think it's slow, quiet, and suspenseful. But I love it every single time. Every single time I watch that movie, I get into that movie, even though I've. No, Seen it's it, great. It's like, great. It's great. Listen, Alien was my number ten. I bumped mm -hmm. it. I'm not gonna lie to you. Look, like, 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 look. There was Alien. Yeah, I, I bumped it. So, I bumped we, it. We, you know, enough about. It. We we've did a whole show on this. The sequels were great. Everything about Alien <laughs> is great. Um, you know, uh, number ten. Here's what I'm gonna say about Alien. First of all, to in a world where Star Wars existed right. and Star Trek existed already, Alien came out and showed you the dark side of space. Yeah. The real dark side. Right. Not this Vader shit. Okay? It was scary. Mm. And, and yeah. No. And Batsy, can you stop talking about anal? Thank you. All okay. right. So, my number nine. My number nine. Where is it? Aliens. Aliens. Oh, have <sighs> Aliens is my number nine, directed by James Cameron, starring Sigourney Weaver. This is why Alien did not make my top ten. You were wrong back then, and you're wrong now. Shut your cock. All right, listen to me. All right, listen. Aliens is better than Alien. And James Cameron is a better visionary director than Ridley Scott. And is a better sci-fi director than Ridley Scott and storyteller than Ridley Scott. James Cameron is amazing. Aliens 
is a better sci-fi movie than Alien. You're up. You want to you comment on that or no? No. Number nine, The Fifth Element. Not, oh, tell, wait. Tell me why. The directed thing? Directed by Luke Besson. What do you mean why? Like, The Fifth Element has achieved cold status. Bruce Willis is awesome. Bruce Willis is in a lot of sci-fi movies, surprisingly. But Bruce Willis is great in that movie. Um, Chris Tucker was in it, which was fantastic. Yeah. Um, and, um, dude, it, the visually it was beautiful to look at. It was really colorful. Fifth Element was great. Right. Was, the, I, I, Gary I, Oldman as the bad guy, the villain Gary was Gary Oldman's great in anything. Awesome. Yeah, he's, he's the cast. So the casting was spot on. Even even the two monks that they got, the comedic support was great. I just, the, the movie's iconic, and there's reason to be. It's a fun action movie. It's funny. It's everything. So I'll, I'll watch it. If it's on right now, I would watch it. Fifth Element's good. I, I like that. Uh, it unfortunately did not make my list. So I'm going to say right now. Well, we'll see what's next. I'm just curious to see what the rest... I don't even care about my list. What's next? <laughs> I just want to get through your list. I'm <laughs> rushing it. Um, my number eight... Oh, you're going ki- to you're gonna kill me on this. You're going to kill me on this. I know it already. Lost in Space. Came out in 1998, directed by Stephen Hopkins, starring Gary Oldman and William Hurt. <laughs> Over Alien? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. I love that movie. I love Lost in Space. I love that. Talk about a fun movie, okay? First of all, all right, like, it showed us warp speed in a way we've never seen it before. It had elements of time travel. It had elements of of alternate realities. It had aliens in it, that those spider creatures, that, that and Gary Oldman was in it. He was the villain. He was great in it. And, and, uh... And 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 the genius kid and the robot and it's it, it was a fun movie and it is pure sci-fi. It is, it it, it was great. I loved it. It was it was like, it, and, and 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 it's good for all ages. Any age could have watched that movie and enjoyed it. Even though the spiders were a little scary at times, uh, but I uh, I I thought that movie was amazing. I, I forgot it. You need to watch it. You need to revisit. Everyone needs to revisit Lost in no. Space. Underrated movie. Um, really good. Not when really I can good. watch my number seven for like the tenth Wait, time. Wait, number eight. Number eight. Eight. Number eight. Mad Max Fury Road. I, is that even sci-fi? Absolutely. I wouldn't call that sci-fi, but go on. Tell me why. Mad Max Fury Road was... I think it, why? Because it takes place in the future? That makes it sci-fi? No, there's a lot of sci-fi elements to it. It's just an action well, movie. I, 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 it's I, an uh, action movie. Here's the thing. I, what I, is sci-fi about it? I consider most dystopian movies automatically, I have them as sci-fi. Just because it takes place in the future doesn't make it sci-fi. It's a bunch of people fucking driving around a desert. Well, what do you call it, a race movie? A desert movie? Yeah, a desert race action movie. No. It's an action movie. Well, Lost in Space sucks, so I'm going to do this. No, no, wait, wait. Ma- ma- no, ma- tell, tell us why Mad Max. Oh, my Mad Max? Is your number eight? Uh, did you see it? Yeah, I saw it. It's great, but it's yeah. not. It's not sci-fi. Fantastic. It's not sci-fi. Anyways, it's it, not sci-fi. So, guys, well, but when you look it up on IMDb, it says sci-fi. Fuck IMDb. It's not sci-fi. Everywhere it says sci-fi. Why? Because it takes place in the future. That makes it sci-fi. So, any movie that takes place in the future is sci-fi. So, Back to the Future Three is not sci-fi. Back to the Future is sci-fi. No, not Part Three. Yeah. Who the fuck cares what I It's a West. It's a horses and shit. It's not sci What makes Back to the Future 3? Because they went back to the future? Look, suck my dick. All right, listen. Whatever. Listen. The- Mad Max Fury Road is amazing. All right, you got- Everyone was great. The guy that was playing the guitar with his mother's face stitched on. Which, by the way, speakers. they're coming out with pop figures for that. For the dude with the speakers? With the guitar, yeah. Shut up. Yeah. I want it. They are. But, like, just him or, like, a diorama? Just him. Fuck. Yeah. Um, Dude... <laughs> You know that that movie was what was so great is we were just complaining on the Kingsman review um, about the Justice League trailers how it all looked in the green screen. Yes, right. Mad Max was all like physically done. It was like no, refreshing. It, it, it was great. Yeah, it, it, it was great. I just don't. I don't. I out of all the sci-fi movies in the world, I just don't think it's. I don't consider it sci-fi. I consider it more like an action movie. I, I could. I mean, there, we, we could have our debates. Like, I didn't include Jurassic Park on my list because like, I wanted to put Predator on, but I don't think Predator is sci-fi. I think then, it's more action. 
Really? No, a predator has to be sci-fi. It's act- why? Because there's an there's a there's a, there's a hunting alien in it. It's it's there's nothing science fiction about it. It's it's it is action driven. It's an action movie. You know? I oh. I don't know. I I struggle to say, you know. I mean, but but then like but we could this argument anyways. So under my own personal definition of what I believe I would group in, I would put Fury Road as sci-fi, and it's my number eight. Over action. So if you had a if you had a video store back in the day, you would put Mad Max Fury Road in the sci-fi section and not the action section? Yeah. See, I'd put it in the action section. But I would Predator would be in the sci-fi section. No, I'd put Predator in the action How section. How about like Jurassic also. Park? Jurassic Park I'd put in the action section. Really? Yeah. See? It, it's, action it, adventure. It's rough. It's rough. Action adventure. It, these movies like really toe a line. Of course they toe a line, so. but... But they, they some lean more towards the other than the other. Yeah, so Next whatever. number. Waterworld is super underrated, but did not make my list. It did not make my list either. It did not make. My, there is no Waterworld. I'm sorry. Uh, number seven on underrated. my list, and you're, this is going to surprise you. Number seven on my list is Back to the Future. Now everyone that, is that knows really me, surprising. Everyone that knows me would have thought that Back to the Future would have been my number one. He owns a DeLorean. I own a DeLorean, and and Back to the Future. He owns the sneakers. Listen, back, back back to the Back to the Future for the record is my favorite movie ever. I think it's the best movie ever, but it didn't make my number one sci-fi. It's number seven. Here's why: it has elements of sci-fi, but it's also funny. It's also um, suspenseful. It's also dramatic, it, and uh, it's also a family film. So it's not it it's not it's not drenching in sci-fi. Sci-fi is a big element of it because of the time machine and the science behind the time travel. But at its core, it's really not a sci-fi movie. It's more an action comedy, I would say. But it it, does, these are the ones that we struggle with. But but for that reason, I can't make it my number one. As as great of a movie that is, if I'm speaking sci-fi only, it is not. My number one. But, Back to the Future is a great movie. But why? Why is it? Why is it my number seven? Why is it even on a list? Because it is a great movie. That movie can come on at any time in any place in the movie, and I am watching it. It is amazing, and it is just well put together. Directed by Robert Zemeckis, who has done amazing movies: Roger Rabbit, Forrest Gump. We can go on and on. Um, Back but, to Back to the Future too was way heavier on the sci-fi, right? Yes, Cause, because, cause it because it happened in the future. Future, it, right. had, it had alternate realities. Right, right, right. Uh, yes, yes. But did they have some microwave that like? Yeah, it, the, well, the little food in uh, the giant. The hydrator. Yeah, the dehydrator. Hydrator, yeah, yeah. No, not a dehydrator. Hydrator. That was yes, fantastic. A hydrator. Yes, yes. Uh, but uh, um, I considered all three movies to be one movie. So when I say Back to the Future, I'm not just speaking of one. I'm speaking of one, two, and three. We had this argument. We had this argument. It's hey, it's the only movie in cinema that is truly one movie where the sequel picks up where the predecessor left off. Truly, like without any time gap. It's true. Fuck you. Fuck you, Internet, if you don't believe me. Anyways, um, so um, that's my number seven. And plus the DeLorean. What an iconic character in itself that embodies sci-fi, if you ask me. But anyways, uh, you're number seven. A movie we've talked about a lot, so I'm not going to talk a lot about it here, but Minority Report. Good. Minority Report is uh, Steven Spielberg, and that's my one. And Steven Spielberg is awesome because Steven Spielberg has a lot of sci-fi movies. Tons, yeah. But you know what's unfortunate for so like, and you can tell by the rest of my list, I'm not trying to be like dark or whatever, right? But a lot of the sci-fi I like happens to just be darker. And Steven Spielberg, all of his are just so like lighthearted, right? Yeah. Um, in Close Encounters of the First Kind, third, um, kind. third kind, I'm sorry, he the aliens weren't presented as like these evil creatures that came to take over the Earth, right? It was just yeah. more of a curiosity. Obviously, E.T. Um, in AI, the 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 artificial intelligence didn't go crazy and fucking kill everybody. It was basically on a on a on a on on a journey of like self discovery, like so Steven Spielberg, I think suffers a lot from the fact that his movies, um, explore a lighter side of science fiction. Yes. Um, and I think that hurts him when we talk. But he is he has to be considered one of the best sci fi directors ever. I mean, I wouldn't consider War of the Worlds and Minority Report. No, no, lighter that, sides he, of science he, fiction. Later on in in his career, he's gotten more action heavy. Right, but yeah. but but a lot of his stuff, a majority of his science fiction movie, and like Close Encounters, E.T., um, you know, it's 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 
it's it's more lighthearted. It's not as sinister as all, and and not as dark in the future or even in the resolution of his movies as most other uh, sci-fi movies. Yeah, I, I don't think we can argue that Spielberg is one of the greats. He's actually got a great documentary on HBO mm-hmm. right now. He's yeah, his movies about, don't, about his it, it's his biography basically. They're they're not as philosophical as say as a lot of the other sci-fi movies either. So. The, uh, I mean, AI the, being the exception. I, I, see, I think I think his movies are are philosophical from a family standpoint. I think I think okay, I think at fair. the end of the day, at the end of the day, a lot of Spielberg's movies focus on the family and 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 what it takes to be a family and mm-hmm. keep a family and all that stuff like that. Okay. <clears throat> Which a he, Jurassic he, Park, he, he's obviously, kind of like that. Right. Uh, uh, AI is even kind of like that. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a bunch of movies that Spielberg does, but. But okay, but you you suck Spielberg's dick for like five minutes because we've already about, talked about Minority Report. Well, maybe they didn't see that. Well, what's great about Minority Report? What makes it what makes it your number seven on the side? Number one, list? Tom Cruise. Tom doesn't make bad movies. No, nope. does a lot of great also sci-fi movies. Yeah. Um, I I think Minority Report is is especially because it's relevant to what I feel like is going on today with like the hyper vigilance and. And yeah. the the loss of our privacy and what the internet means to us. Basically, the premise of Minority Report is they have what are called precogs, and they can see the future, and they see future crimes. So the U.S. government creates this future crimes division that arrests people based on these um, these visions of the future, right? And and then what happens is it seems like Tom Cruise commits a crime in the future, and so it's him trying to escape and blah blah blah, and what it means and all that. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Check it out. Yeah. Check really, out all really of Tom Cruise's movies. Everything. <clears throat> Except The Mummy. You can check it out, too. All right. My number six. Stargate. Came out in 1994. Ooh, I forgot Stargate. Directed by Roland Emmerich. I botched that. Um, starring Kurt Russell and James Spader. Yeah. Um, and let me tell you what. This movie is fucking amazing. Okay? Yeah. What a cool concept, first of all, that... Basically, our history is forged from an ancient alien civilization that helped build the ancient Egyptian empire where we communicated through universes through this fucking portal called a Stargate. Yeah. And we dis- archaeologists discover it and crack the code to open it and they discover basically the origins of us. And it turns out to be some crazy loony alien that 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 it, it's just great. I I think I, I don't know. I, Were you into the show? I never saw the show. No, Stargate SG One was pretty good. I I never saw. There's been a couple Stargate things. Yeah, they, Stargate they Atlantis. Few, yeah, yeah. They they had a Stargate. They didn't have a Stargate movie, but they, it was like straight to video or something. Yeah, like that. right, right. Yeah. No, but Stargate's a fantastic movie. Stargate, it was really, really good. Stargate is, is. I mean, it's fucking Kurt Russell too, right? Kurt Russell, like Kurt Russell's another awesome. Another just made ton of sci-fi movies. Yeah. That guy too. Yeah. You know, James Spader's great. Yeah. You know, uh, which by the way, he has aged quite a bit. His voice has changed. He must be a smoker. Yeah. Yeah. He's on the show Blacklist. The Blacklist, just, yeah. yeah. And he was on The Office too. And he was mm-hmm. the Ultron. He was on The Office. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. Stargate, amazing movie. Came out in 1994. Uh, and it was the first time you really saw that whole, like, you know, when they went through the Stargate and you saw that, like, tube thing and all those graphics. Like, that was the first time you saw that. And then, like, remember Lawnmower Man came out after right. that and used those graphics. Like much, and but. and X-Men, the opening montage, right. had that, too. So Stargate really did a lot of groundbreaking from a graphics perspective as well. But the story is very original. Yeah. And it, 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 it bleeds science fiction. So yeah. it's my number six. No. Yeah. Twelve monkeys. Fuck you. Go. Just go. Bruce Willis, first of all. The director is Terry Gilliam. One of my favorite directors ever. He also did my honorable mention Brazil, The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Like Terry Gilliam's awesome. Twelve Monkeys is the best time travel movie ever made. Maybe double fuck you. Okay, so double fuck you. So primer, you can make an argument for primer, and I'll accept it. But Twelve Monkeys is the way time travel functions. In fact, I believe that Twelve Monkeys was so accurate about how time travel would function that it bumped Terminator Two off my list. Are you telling me Terminator Two isn't even on your list? Twelve Monkeys bumped it. Wait, you're gonna tell me Terminator Two isn't even on your list? That's right. It got lost in space, motherfucker. Oh my god. Oh my God! 
Oh my god. Twelve monkeys. You're you're fucking an idiot. All right, where's that Susie Fett? She's taking a dump. <laughs> <laughs> That's Susie Fett, come here. Come here. Do we have any comments right now? Questions? Anything? <laughs> oh. Oh, they're oh the toddlers. The there's, there's Oh, Twelve Monkeys is really a good movie, man. You're Monkeys you're wrong. Sucks a dick. So good. <laughs> Who said that about me? Because it clearly it clearly wasn't one. What what? What's her name? Dario the Hulk. Good job. Do you, do you know who Dario the Hulk is? I don't know, but I love this person. Dario the Hulk. Clearly, you are a bigger person with that handle. So, fuck off. I get pussy. Go on. Oh my God. <laughs> also shocking. <laughs> Bomb. Hey, Thank you. Is that the same guy? Same guy. All right. That's, hey, it's okay. It's your opinion, dude. Which, Soul, by, which by the way, soulmates. By, by, by the way, D Dario the Hulk, you're more than welcome to come into the store and sit in on one of our episodes whenever you want. But we're, we're soulmates, man. We're kind of mean to each other here. So if you, if you can't take if you, if you can't take the heat, don't come in the kitchen. Anyways, soulmates. Yes. Alien. Okay. Is this still the same guy? Yes. The, dude. Jurassic Thank you, Amanda. I like Amanda. Amanda. There you go. Adrian, we should hang out. And, uh, Mr. Says, 12, money is great. 12 monkeys. Is great. Yeah, oh, of course, of course it is. Whatever. Get your mouth off the dick. Anyways. All right. So to recap uh, the, uh, where we are right now, my number 10 was The Time Machine, the original one, 1960. Number nine, Aliens, the sequel to Alien. Number eight was Lost in Space from 1998, the remake. Number seven was Back to the Future, which I consider all three one movie. And my number six was Stargate in 1994. Juan, what were yours? Alien was 10. Fifth Element was 9. Mad Max Fury Road was 8. Minority Report, Minority Report 7. And 12 Monkeys, number 6. There you go. Instagram, we're going to leave you now. If you want to see what our top five are, you're going to have to go to youtube.com search corker comics that video should be up in the next day or so uh to see our complete top 10 science fiction movies so bye bye instagram bye bye and Susie fett you could just post that video up yep and uh now we can continue and now to my number five my number five is total recall 1995 directed by paul michael glasser Starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Listen to me for a second. This movie, first of all, what is reality, what isn't? We don't even know if he's still in the fucking recall chair, right. the whole movie or not. Like, but first of all, the whole recall concept, awesome. Yeah. Second of all, Martians fucking defrosting the core and creating an atmosphere, awesome. Yeah. Third of all, mutants. That were originally humans that turned into mutants because they were the first colonists that fucking, you know, didn't react well to the air at the time. Awesome. Four, Dick Jones, whatever his real name is, you know, mm. but he played Dick Jones on RoboCop, I think, yeah. right? Uh, and, and Same he, director. Amazing fucking. RoboCop was directed by the same guy that did Total Recall, well, and so was Starship Troopers. Well, whatever the fuck, it's fucking, yeah. it's, it's amazing. And and that guy's that guy's one of the best villains, and uh, and yeah. the fact that he could control the air and do all that stuff, and just seeing Mars, it, I, I I was I was, what a great sci-fi so, movie. So quick question, um, it did and it didn't it didn't measure up to Total Recall, but I felt that the the new Total Recall they did wasn't that bad. The new Total Recall was great. Yeah, it was pretty good. I was surprised. It was good, but you have to separate it from the original. It, 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 it that's the problem. It's almost that's a completely problem. different movie. They shouldn't have called it Total. No, Recall. they shouldn't have. They should have called it Total Recall, and they should have. They should have had. They, they, they should have had had him getting his thing from, from some from something else. You okay. know what I mean? Uh, like 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 it wasn't a, an implant. Right, right, right. Way. It was something right. else. Right. You know what I mean? So, um, good movie though. Totally, the original Total Recall. Fantastic. My number five. 
Go. My number five is Dark City. I've never even seen that. I haven't seen Dark City. No. <laughs> Dark City was uh, directed by Alex Proyas. Um, had Kiefer Sutherland in it, Jennifer Connelly. Um, basically, it's about this dude that has no memories. And he's in a city where there's never any sun. And he can't get a hold of his memories. And there's a reason why, and I'm not going to explain it. But here's a problem. Explain Th- it. This is why, huh? If you could do it quickly, it, it's it's he's not actually on Earth. It's just like this alien ship, and everyone is put to sleep, and it like changes, and they just keep people from realizing that they're not on Earth, so they don't get all fucked up and whatever. Anyways, the problem is that this movie came out at the same time as The Matrix, and so nobody saw Dark City, and it's a shame you should see it. I didn't. see Everyone it. should see it. That's the reason The Matrix isn't on my list. Just 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 a. Just a just a protest. Just and, because and, it and fucked over Dark City, which, and by the way, Dark man, City. Matrix is because it's so popular and iconic, right? But it's still one of the best sci-fi movies ever made. Like, like the appara- Matrix... The, apparently not. It's not even on no, your list. The, the con- I'm, well, I didn't put it on my list as what, a protest, but... stubborn? But the, the, the concepts... No, but don't you feel that way? Like, the Matrix, it's it's gotten, like, watered down. I, and especially because of the sequels. Anyways, Dark City, I love you. My number four... The Star Trek reboot, 2009, directed by J.J. Abrams, Whoa. starring Chris Pine. Whoa. <laughs> I know you weren't expecting that, were you? Here we go. You're Ready? talking shit about 12 Monkeys. Yeah, and- no, 12 Monkeys is not that great compared to this. All right, listen. First of all, what a great way to reboot this franchise. Star Trek was... I, I'm a huge Star Trek fan. I actually enjoy Star Trek more than the Star Wars, if I had to pick between the two. I'm a Star Trek. I'm a Trekkie before I'm a Star Wars guy. Um, and I like it because it's grounded in a sense of reality. Um, and But Star Trek, up until J.J. Abrams' interpretation, was very bland, slow, heavy dialogue-driven, and not a lot of action. You know, you had the phasers, and that was really it. And they'd be like, oh, ah, uh, ooh, ah. Uh. And then they would talk to a screen on a bridge set all the time. That was th- Those were the movies. You know, J.J. Abrams reinvented this franchise, took what was great about the TV show as well as the movies, and spit it back out. Gave us a much better origin of Captain Kirk and and Spock that we've never seen before. Showed us a side of Vulcan we've never seen before. And then at the same time, created a new timeline of Star Trek without doing disservice to the original ones that the fans loved by having the Romulans come back in time and destroying Vulcan and creating a new timeline, which means everything that we saw before, Wrath of Khan, Search for Spock, that all happened, but just in a different timeline. So they showed a lot of respect to the canon of Star Trek, but reinvented it for a new audience. It was fun. It was fast-paced. The characters were great. The casting was amazing. The guys that they got to play, all the characters were great. And and I'm sorry, Star Trek, again, bleeds science fiction. A lot of what we have today is stuff that was predicted by Star Trek and the TV shows in the 60s. And a lot of what we see in Star Trek that comes out today will be our future. So you have to acknowledge Star Trek and you have to really respect it. And the fact that not one Star Trek movie is on your list is a disservice to that franchise because... It embodies science fiction. Go. None of the <clears throat> Star Trek movies, in my opinion, other than maybe Wrath of Khan, is better than any of the other science fiction movies on my list, which is why it's not on there. Fair and enough. I believe that you're completely wrong because what you said about Star Trek was right. It was all about <clears throat> the science, exploration. Yes. It was about, like, it, it was basically meeting different cultures and how you deal with that. And it, taught us a lot about you know um like accepting other people's cultures and 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 promoted dialogue and diplomacy and and all these concepts okay. that are very now considered like sci-fi and a jj abrams said i am going to shit all over fucking everything that has ever been done in star trek and i am going to make it some type of star wars hybrid look dude you're just a jj abrams hater no, I just don't. I don't believe that movie. I I believe that movie is a disservice to to start what Star Trek is. It's it's not. Yeah, it has never been action packed, man. I th- I 
I thought Star Trek the reboot movie was very action. And then the, uh, the the opening scene with fucking Chris Hemsworth as Kirk's dad and, and blowing but, up the and, ship. But that's my and, problem. And, and the the whole the, the fight scenes on 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 the drill. That's my problem. Like, and look, look, I love the original Star Trek too. I love the original series. But what what my favorite Star Trek series really is is the Next Generation. Next Generation was right? great. That's, that's what we grew up with. So oh, it's probably going to hold a bigger place. This movie is like if you look at the first J.J. Abrams reboot, the one you just talked about, and the first episode of Next Generation, which was the one with Q and and the, yeah, 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 right, like it couldn't. They, they're presenting two completely different concepts, man. No, no. Star Trek: The Next Generation. I mean, Star Trek: Next Generation is great, but Star Trek: The Reboot, two thousand nine, J.J. Abrams, amazing interpretation. Great job, J.J. Great job, Paramount. Way to bring an amazing franchise into the present day and make it relevant to a new audience. And I hope all your future Star Wars and Star Trek movies <laughs> are, are action-packed and about killing aliens and fucking and, and Chris Pine. Yeah, I hope it works out for you guys. Right. What's your number four? <laughs> My number four is Children of Men. I've never seen that. I know. <laughs> Children of Men is... Please tell me what this dra- garbage is. It's Clive Owen's The Star. Okay. It's a dystopian future. We'll see a theme in what I like. It basically, what happens is no children have been born in over 20-some-odd years. Cool. Um, for some reason, women can't get pregnant. Okay. Um, there's a fear that society is going to die out, whatever. Um, all of a sudden, Clive Owen, disco- there's a, a friend of his sends this girl to him that is pregnant. She's the first woman to be pregnant in years and it's about him trying to get her to this resistance group uh to safety before the the government grabs her okay it's it's awesome what's it called uh children of men it's on netflix who's the director um the director is alfonso cuaron he, he's he did like it mama también i think um he's pretty good visually the movie's awesome and uh, Clive Owen just kills it in that movie the action is great the concepts are fantastic it's pure sci-fi Okay. Uh, my number three. Here we go. Nitty gritty. Um, Planet of the Apes, released 1968, directed by Franklin Schaffner, starring Charlton Heston. Absolutely not. Absolutely so. The reboot of Don... If you would have told me the... You know what? I was expecting you to say the reboot of Planet of the Apes, and I would have agreed with you. What, the that Tim Burton it, one? That it could make... No, no, no. The uh, the one with Caesar. No. Planet of the Apes, the original one with Charlton Heston. Do you find that to be better? You could watch. That's more watchable than what we have now. It's amazing. It's amazing. Go ahead. What an amazing movie that 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 tackles a post-apocalyptic future. We don't know where we are, but all we know is that things are ass backwards. The apes are the humans, and the humans are the apes. They are mute. The humans are mute. They don't have the mind capacity to to solve problems or, or have, have intelligent thought, whereas the apes do. And then you have Charlton Heston, who is an astronaut space explorer that lands on this odd planet, only to find out at the very end that he's been on Earth the entire time. Fuck yeah, dude. And 1968 on top of that? Fuck yeah. Sign me the fuck up. I mean, it's very Twilight Zone. It's amazing. Sorry. I, I mean, I like the movie. I just, it's not, I would, I, I, I've you, seen you, it. You, I don't no, want to see it you again. You know what it is? It's, it's, it's such an original concept. And it but is, it hasn't aged well. Because it's shot. This is, this is, this is about watchability and I just, no, I can't this is watch about, it. No, this isn't about watchability. This is about what I like. That's no, what it is. That's, no. And I think if I got to measure sci-fi, Planet of the Apes, the original one, hits my top three. Sure. I'm sorry you don't appreciate the classics, Juan. I do appreciate the classics. You haven't I had just, one classic on there. Because this isn't about, it's what I want to watch. And right. I, and even it's though, supposed to be what you like, which means and, you don't and like I, the classics. I do like the classics, but... Clearly you don't. I'd rather watch... There, the oldest movie you have on there is Alien. There's been advancements. There's Whatever. been advancements. You know what? You're like... You, you, don't, you're, you, don't, you don't appreciate storytelling. That's you're what smoking is. a vape right now. No, you don't appreciate storytelling. Yeah. You don't, you're you, you're you vape. No, fuck you off. are being no. a completely no. pretentious, no. one of no. these pretentious no. sci-fi people. So, no. You're like, no. Planet of the Apes is so good. No. You know what's really no. good? You're like... The Super Nintendo's no. better than the Xbox. That's true. But Bullshit. Listen. No, listen. Listen. No, you're like, you're like oh, the, gra- the, the special effects are bad. 
You're one of those fucking douchebags. No, I'm just saying I wouldn't. I'd rather watch one of these now because the effects are better. Because it looks better. Yeah, yeah. Because 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 your eyes need to fucking do the storytelling instead of your mind. Go on. Yeah, exactly. That's what I go to the movies. To Whatever. Do. What's your number three? Empire Strikes Back. I'll tell you what. A Star Wars film didn't even make my list, but go on. There probably be wouldn't be any type of space. Related movie if it wasn't for Star Wars. Tell it to Stanley Kubrick in 2001 that came out 10 years before Star Wars. And it didn't have... Are you saying that 2001 is as is as relevant as a Star Wars franchise? No, not at all. That's not what I'm saying at all. But don't say that. Fucking, After 2001... Well, you, 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 you can tell me someone else wouldn't have fucking done space? Look, Come you know on, what dude. sci-fi is? Sci-fi is one of my favorite genres and along with westerns. They're two very old school. They were super popular back in the I, listen, 50s and I, 60s. Then they died. They died, right. and Star Wars brought it back. Great, like it's crazy to think otherwise. Right, so is that why Empire is your number? And three? the reason why Empire is my third favorite movie was I feel it is the best Star Wars movies. I mean, I'm not alone in that. Almost anyone will say that Empire. Um, mostly, I actually it was, like Jedi better. But go on. <sighs> wow. So I like how Empire. I, I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it anymore. Talk like, about I don't know what just... You just blank me. All I can see is stupid fucking Ewoks. Talk about Jedi. And you think that's better. Wait, talk about Empire, I mean. Then the big revelation... Talk I mean, about Empire. Empire is so good that when other movies reference science listen, fiction, they reference listen, Empire. Listen, fucker. When I found out that Darth Vader was the father of Luke Skywalker, I was so young... I don't even remember how it impacted me. And guess what? We're the same age. So there's no fucking way that, like, it blew your mind like it would now. I didn't watch Star Wars when I was, like, six the first time. Oh, see, I did. Well, fuck oh, okay. All right. So Empire Strikes Back, best Star Wars movie, number three sci-fi movie. All right, well, Star Wars isn't even on my list because it's, as great as it is, it's, 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 it's very fantasy Right. It's yeah. not like someone landing on a planet of fucking apes. Not, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. Whatever. <laughs> my number... My number two... <laughs> it's, it's fine, dude. It's fine. It's fine. You can suck my dick later. Um, my number two is Terminator 2. Directed by James Cameron. Starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. First of all, this movie still holds up today. It's Terminator 2 could come out in the movie theater today and go up against any one of these fucking movies. Yeah. It it is it is the 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 technological advancements of that movie are on another level. Before Terminator 2, I never saw shit like that before ever. The yeah. Abyss kind of, which again is another James Cameron movie. Mm -hmm. But um but but no, the the liquid metal and and all that shit and the time travel and the the, the T one thousand going up against the T eight hundred, Linda Hamilton what made Sigourney Weaver look like a bitch, you know like it it it, it you know, you know there was some shit going on because because James Cameron criticized Wonder Woman and how it really wasn't that groundbreaking and it was a good movie but it wasn't this fucking amazing piece of thing I gotta agree with him and they're like oh James Cameron you you don't understand female leads it's like fuck you if anyone understands fucking female leads it's James Cameron he gave us fucking you know he he, he yes he he piggybacked off what Ridley Scott did with Sigourney Weaver but he did a great job because Sigourney Weaver was a badass Newt was a badass fucking you know uh, Linda Hamilton a badass fucking um Car uh, 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 the, what's what's the what's the girl's name from fucking Halloween she was in Trading Places and True Lies. Yeah. It's Carrie something, isn't it? No. Yeah. Oh. Jamie no. Lee Curtis. Jesus, thank thank you. We're all with Jamie God, Lee. I was about to vomit. Yeah, Jamie Lee like, Curtis. I was trying to get it out. He made her into a badass also. So let's be real about something. James Cameron understands female leads and how to make them into badasses. James Cameron is a phenomenal director, arguably one of the best sci-fi storytellers and directors ever. His movies are great. He does not make bad movies. No. James Cameron does not make a bad fucking movie. All you Titanic haters can go fucking suck a dick and take it up the ass and do anal like Rich likes, all right? All right, Batsy likes, I mean, all right? So listen, <clears throat> Terminator 2 
is amazing. It was almost my number one, but I couldn't make it my number one. Number one, because Terminator 2 was a sequel, and I love Terminator, but it wasn't better than Terminator 2, and I had to pick between the two. I didn't want to have two of the same movie on my list. Um, but Terminator 2, amazing. You're number two. It, it, it didn't make my list, um, unfortunately, because it's just there's just a lot of good sci-fi movies. Um, the fact that you don't have... Whatever, go on. What's your number two? My number two? Yeah, go. It's Total Recall. Which one? Huh? The original Total Recall. Good for you. Total Recall is... Good for you. ...is, is an wow. almost... I, I'm surprised right now. I'm getting hard on the my, table. My list is way more sci-fi than yours. Wow. Total... To, dude, Total Recall is 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 close to being the per, like a perfect sci-fi movie. Wow. Uh, Total Recall is almost a perfect movie. That surprised there, me just now. Go why? On. There's nothing I would ever change about Total Recall. Which 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 made the reboot make no sense? Right. When when I heard they were doing a reboot, I'm like, why? Total Recall did, and, and again, like the total the reboot, reboot was good. The reboot was good, but call something else. Total Recall is just is basically it's it's untouchable. Like there's just they made a perfect movie. There's no way to improve on it. Like you take out any character, the movie break like falls apart. I loved every character on their own, even the fucking the taxi cab driver. Great, like I got Benny. five kids to fit. Yeah, Benny, yeah. Like everything in that movie, the when yeah. he shows the the Guado. little crit, the, Guado. Oh my god! Yeah. With then with, when he's when Arnold Schwarzenegger has the mask on. Yeah. In the airport, there's so many, and and the concept's awesome. Very sci-fi concept. Absolutely. It spawned a whole shit ton of movies. Um, you could you could say even Vanilla Sky. Is Total Recall inspired? It's like a lot yes, of them are, you know. Recall, yeah. And uh, and I just got to give it up to Total Recall as probably one of my favorite in the eighties, like sci-fi movies. It came out in nineteen ninety. Nineties, whatever. <laughs> yeah, Total Recall is great. Yeah, it was on my list, so I, you you won't. I'm surprised that's your number two. All right, my number one is The Matrix, directed by the Wachowski brothers, starring Keanu Reeves. Here's why. All right, listen. I know that a lot of people want to hate on The Matrix. And they're like, oh, fuck The Matrix. Reloaded sucked and Revolutions was garbage. Revolutions was garbage. Reloaded I actually liked. Revolutions was, okay. Revolutions was really a piece of dog shit. I, I do agree. Like, But we're just talking about Matrix, the first one. Which is a standalone movie. It could have ended right where it did and that was the end of it. It didn't need sequels. It just did so well that it demanded sequels. I never saw anything like I saw in The Matrix before I saw The Matrix. The Matrix re and really did usher in a new era of cinema and the way things are shot. And just the, the whole stopping and moving the camera angle was just wow. And let's just think about this for a second. Post-apocalyptic future, cr machines take over, nothing new, like Terminator, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen this concept before, the whole singularity thing. It's, it's nothing that we haven't seen before. But the fact that the machines use humans and harvest them for their electrobiofluid to, to power themselves and created this world, which is what we think is real, but not, like, it makes you question your own reality. And, like, it is so deep. They, they, like, they went deep into, like, thought. Like, 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 you can't be a stupid person and watch that movie and understand it. Like, you, like it is... It is just so sci-fi. It's crazy. Not to mention the action was great. The soundtrack was fucking great. The effects were great. The 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 casting was great. Hannah hey, Keanu Reeves all you want. He did a great job as Neo. Uh, and it, it it the character of Agent Smith was amazing. The agents in general and just the the the, the whole bullet motion. It, like kudos to the Wachowski brothers for really reshaping cinema sci-fi, showing us something that we've never seen before. And before that, before we before the Matrix. Terminator 2 was really the last movie I saw where I was like, wow, I've never seen that before, you know? And 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 just The Matrix broke new ground on a storytelling perspective, mm -hmm. on a visual perspective, and and ushered in the new, the new millennium, millennium properly, I thought. so. That's, Jurassic that's, Park did that for me, what The Matrix did. <clears throat> Jurassic Park was great, yeah. Show us dinosaurs. Like, what I mean is, no, like, when you walk yeah. out of The Matrix, you feel like, you know, like, movies are going to change. Yeah. No. I felt that way with Jurassic Park. Jurassic but but we you know what you know Jurassic Park was amazing. Dinosaurs looked real as fuck, but it wasn't the first time we've seen CG shit. Mm -hmm. You know, Terminator came before Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, Terminator fucking fuck, you know? Uh Terminator 2 that is. But Matrix is my number 1. Go. I mean, you could tell them what my number 1 is. Just go. Just go. It's Blade Runner. The first one? Yep. Tell us why. So, 
<clears throat> my favorite subgenre of uh, my favorite <laughs> subgenre of sci-fi is cyberpunk. Okay. So, Blade Runner basically invented cyberpunk. Um, Blade Runner and his time was a flop. It has one of my favorite actors, uh, Harrison Ford, who's kind of like to me Tom Cruise. Like he does not make movies that I won't watch. He's made some bad movies, a lot more than Tom Cruise, but he's watchable. Um, all the concepts about that movie and all the discussions that I've had over the years is just turned into my favorite movie. That's all you got to say about it? Mm-hmm. It's deep, man. It's incredible. The, the score was amazing. Right. The visuals on yeah. the budget that they had was ahead of its time. Dude, when Blade Runner came out, there was nothing like Blade Runner. Okay. All right. uh, when it comes to how you present a dystopian world, Blade Runner, I feel like it set the foundations for that. Right. And a lot of these movies that we have, apocalyptic worlds, and and the, the the thing we see in movies now, were inspired by Blade Runner, and a lot of the sci-fi themes. Um, Blade Runner is the one that touched on them all. Stuff that ins- ended up inspiring stuff like Ex Machina and Her, and and all these sci-fi movies, even Dark City, even the fucking Matrix, right, comes from. Um, from Blade Runner, and when we talk about writers that are in, that are hugely influential on the sci-fi genre, I give props to Verne, but but like Philip K. Dick has to be the most important writer ever for for the sci-fi genre. Above Jules Verne. Above Jules Verne, I would give it to Philip K. Dick, man. Mm. His and and and, and I'm I'm not I, talking. I'm, I'm saying no, no, Jules Verne. Like Sorry. Jules Verne is great. Like you know Sorry. when you got like Time Machine and Sorry. Leagues and all that stuff, that's fantastic. But when, when Sorry, we're talking, like he's the founder. No, absolutely, yeah. but when we're talking about the concepts, right, like Philip K. Dick was miles ahead of, of, of Jules Verne in the concepts that he created, like in, in Scattered yeah, yeah. Darkly and all that stuff, like yeah. in Minority Report, okay. like it was also inspired by him. Like Philip K. Dick is, is pretty instrumental to, to Would sci-fi. there be a Philip K. Dick without Jules Verne? No, there wouldn't. So, I mean, I don't know, whatever. Mm-hmm. That's how I see it. You know, there wouldn't be a Stephen Hawking without Einstein. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're they're yeah yeah so so okay so he was inspired by but so. you said the bet I don't know whatever anyways listen okay so recap uh, my number ten the original time machine nineteen sixty number nine aliens the sequel number eight lost in space from nineteen ninety eight number seven so back to the bad. future number six Stargate number five. Total Recall, the original, 1990. Number four, Star Trek, the reboot, 2009. Number three, Planet of the Apes, the original, 1968. Number two, Terminator 2. And number one, The Matrix. Number 10, Alien. Number nine, Fifth Element. Eight, Mad Max Fury Road. Seven, Minority Report. Six, Twelve Monkeys. Five, Dark City. Four, Children of Men. Three, Empire Strikes Back. Two, Total Recall. Number one, Blade Runner. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, our top 10 sci-fi movies ever to date, in our opinion, of course. Uh, check out all the movies, uh, you, know, you know, for the ones I haven't seen, I'm sure they're great. But either way, they're all probably really great movies. If you appreciate the genre of sci-fi, you should check them all out. Mm-hmm. Form your own list. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And uh, other than that, subscribe to our channel, uh, Corker Comics, on the YouTube.com. And uh, come check us out at Corker Comics in Miami as well as Pembroke Pines. For Atomic Pop, I'm Stephen Corker. I'm Juan Farage. Thank you.